My name is Soraya Lawrence and I'm chairing the meeting tonight uh, and welcome to everybody. Um, if anybody's coming to their first meeting, a uh, special welcome. As I said uh, just a moment ago, this is being recorded, so be aware of that. This meeting tonight is about why socialists, communists, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, must fight for their own politics. Uh, and when we talk about a, a party being essential to advance the interests of the, the working class, uh, and by that we mean an absolute break with capitalism. Um, as some comrades will know, we've, we've uh, prepared a statement about what we stand for, and Nick Rack is going to go into the politics behind the statement and also link it in with what we should do in uh, the general election that's coming and what sort of party do we need and, and really what sort of politics would should um, uh, a, a socialist communist party be putting forward. So without further ado, I'll ask Nick to introduce the discussion uh, for 15 minutes, Nick. Okay, thanks, uh, Soraya, and thanks, comrades. Welcome. Um, you've got me for a second um, time running. Uh, unfortunately, we've had to rearrange things. So um, this is my scheduled spot, and I, I'm hoping not to um, replicate what I said a fortnight ago and, and try to develop some of the points. Uh, I'm going to do something a bit new as well. I'm going to share the statement on the screen and go through it so that uh, people can see what we're talking about and can comment in the discussion what you what you think about it, whether you think it's um, good, bad, indifferent, doesn't go, doesn't cover all the points and so on. Uh, before I do, however, I just want to uh, make the point that today, the 18th of March, is the anniversary of the heroic Paris working class uprising known as the Paris Commune on the 18th of March, 1871, uh, in the uh, throes of the Franco-Prussian War, when the Prussians occupied France and uh, laid siege to Paris, the pa Parisian working class rose up when the French ruling class tried to take their cannon away. And the lessons of the Commune, which lasted for 72 days before it was brutally suppressed, gave rise to one of Karl Marx's most important and uh, best pieces of writing known as the Civil War in France, which I would encourage everybody to dig out and to read. It's a magnificent piece of writing, uh, but also perhaps more importantly than that, he drew some central lessons for the working class and its struggle. One of the most important, which is central, um, was that the working class cannot simply lay hold to the ready-made instruments of the existing state and wield them in their own in its own interest, but they have to forge new institutions of working class democracy. And that is extremely important when we're talking about how to change society, why, in what direction. And I, I, I'm hoping to perhaps touch on, on those points a little bit more as I go through our statement. But I think it is important to mark the Paris Commune when it, um, was eventually defeated on the 28th of May. It ended in uh, what became known as the Week of Blood, in which 27,000 at least, 20,000 at least, possibly as many as 37,000 Parisian working class people, men, women, children, were butchered by the French ruling class. And it's important that we um, commemorate that, but more importantly, perhaps learn, learn the lessons. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to share the, um, the statement, which some of you may have read on our website and others may not. 
but it, I think it is going to help in terms of this discussion to, um, to to go through it. Now, can I just ask, can everybody see that shared and read it all? If anybody can't, then then let me know. Mine's a bit obscured by the the list of uh, or the, the photographs of people down down the side. But anyway, talking about socialism from a Marxist point of view, who we are and the ideas that guide us. And I just want to make the point at the very start, because really this is a pitch to you as socialists, communists, Marxists. Um, it's a pitch to you to join us. We want you to get involved in, in our organization with us. And we have discussed the, the, the name of, of, of these chats and talking about socialism from a Marxist point of view. It's clear that it's a, a Marxist discussion group, but we don't want it to be seen simply as a discussion group. A discussion is extremely important. Debate is vital. Disagreements are important. They need to be clarified, talked out, and so on. But all of that, if it's simply to enjoy ourselves and to enjoy the discussions, which I hope they are enjoyable, but if that's all it's about, then it's a pretty um, fruitless exercise. We are working class activists, working class militants, and we see our role as trying to forge an organization to assist in changing society. And that means the theory that we discuss in these discussions, in these meetings, are, 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 it's not an end in itself. It's a guide to action. And we, we, we are a bit concerned that perhaps talking about socialism gives the impression that that's all we want to do. At the moment, we don't have very many uh, people um, in, in our group, in our organization, and therefore we have to uh, determine what we can try to do according to the, the numbers involved. But what we want to do really is to get you to join us, to, be, to become members, and to help us reach out to others and to spread news, word, uh, and involvement in our group. Um, the question is, why our group? And uh, this is what we say in our first paragraph. Uh, and I'm going to read it out, uh, 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 and I'm hoping that I have time to do it all, but it may be that we have to come back to a second half of this type of chat and, uh, uh, and do the second half on another occasion. But talking about socialism from a Marxist point of view is a group of Marxists who believe that we urgently need a serious democratic organization for Marxist ideas and activity with the aim of building support for socialist stroke communist ideas of the construction of a mass socialist communist party. And that in a nutshell, is what we're about. And I've made the point in other talks and I've made the point in my latest article on the website, which I hope some of you at least have read, that when we talk about socialist stroke communist, we mean the same thing by those two words. We're not differentiating between the two. We don't see a difference between socialism and communism. We don't see a difference between socialist and communist, uh, from a Marxist point of view, those words for us mean the same thing. Now, th there are different traditions um, and different tendencies within the Marxist movement, and it is the case that some organizations, some traditions, regard socialism as a step towards communism. Um, and, uh, 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 and in my view, they misread Marx in his critique of the Gotha program and associates socialism with the, what Marx called the lower stage of communism. We think that's a mistake, but that, that's perhaps a discussion for another occasion. When, when we talk about socialist stroke communist, we aren't sort of doing a chronological sequence there. We're, we're, we're using two terms to describe the same thing. I, 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 and that's, in that first paragraph, what we want is we, we want to bring together 
other Marxists and people who are interested in Marxist ideas to work together in a non-sectarian way. That doesn't mean agreeing with every other Marxist, but it means engaging in a comradely way with others who may not agree with us on everything, um, with the idea of forging a unified communist party. There are quite a number of groups, some of them well-established, some, some of them quite big. And for one reason or another, uh, we, that's myself and you, are not members of those organizations. Perhaps you've been a member, you don't want to go back to that organization. Uh, we consider that some of the methods of democracy that prevail in those organizations aren't what they ought to be. We have some disagreements over the uh, perspective about revolution, how it will be carried out and so on. But we don't believe that there's a real reason for communists for Marxists, by and large, to be in separate groups, each one claiming that it's the true inheritor of Marxist ideas. Um, an organization that wants to lead the working class to victory or assist it in taking power should be able to um, allow and encourage differences to be debated, to be discussed. And a lot of the differences that lead to people being in different organizations are actually quite secondary over tactical issues, phraseology, perhaps misunderstandings, and so on. And a bit yeah, like five minutes left, five minutes left. And my goodness, I've not even moved on to paragraph two. Mm -hmm. uh, paragraph two, I'm going to um, go through very just one second, just go through very quickly, because that's the background. I'm not going to read it out, but that's the background to why we are all involved in political struggle. Um, some people refer to these different crises as a, a poly crisis. I just want to make the point that we don't see them as being separated. We don't see them as being coming from different sources. They all come from a crisis within the capitalist system, the nature of capitalism itself which is about um, exploitation, competition. And um, in, in paragraph three, I'm going to skip through that because it's making the same point. Every single working class person is affected by the crises and, and the crises are getting worse. And it means that things that perhaps my generation has taken for granted the reforms of the past are being eroded. Things like the NHS, dentistry has been in the news just recently, and so on. They're being eroded because what's won by the class, by the working class in one era, if we don't continually fight to, to maintain those, and more importantly, we don't fight to change the system so that they are permanent, the, the ruling class will seek to take them back. Point five uh, emphasizes that the crises of capitalism are international and they need an international response. And uh, that we develop that, I think, in paragraph eight. And this is where we come to what we're about. Capitalism must be replaced by a different system in which the private ownership of the means of production, the land, its waters and minerals, the factories, the machines, transport, science and technology has been abolished, along with the exploitation of the working class, which is for profit. In the new society that will develop after the ruling class has been overthrown, the world's resources will be owned in common by everybody with production planned democratically for the benefit of all. It will be a society without any classes because everyone will be a worker like everyone else. And I've just been rereading for my own benefit um, the civil war in France and Marx makes that uh, point uh, very uh, forcefully. It will be a society in which the government of people, so under capitalism, we have basically the repressive government 
by the ruling class of the majority of the working class and that will be replaced by the administration of things and the administration of the way production is organized this system is called socialism or communism and we then say both words have been distorted and misrepresented by misuse in theory and practice in our material we generally use the two terms interchangeably to meet the, mean the same thing socialism or communism means complete political social and economic democracy it requires a fundamental break with capitalism and i'm not going to have the time to go through the remaining paragraphs at this moment but i i just want to concentrate on that it requires a complete break with capitalism we live in a society where in the elections and throughout the rest of the time in between we have parties that vie for the support of the electorate um, to stand in the elections and to become the government for the next five years and so on any communist has to have a party with a program that entails that fundamental break with capitalism and this is where communists or socialists whichever term you want to use have a fundamental disagreement or difference with what we would call social democrats social democracy or if, if you want to use a different term left reformism the idea that somehow capitalism can be reformed in the interests of the working class somehow that sometimes people call themselves socialists but they really mean reforming or managing capitalism nick sorry to can you can you bring your remarks to a close your time's our aim is to break with capitalism to abolish capitalism not to manage it thank you thanks very much indeed now um if we can just can we stop sharing that um so usual uh, put your hands up if you want to to speak uh, i'm going to give preference to um two people who at the beginning said they're going to have to go to uh, to leave at eight o'clock so uh phil and greg if either of you want to um speak do let me know now in fact i'm not sure is greg still here oh no greg yes sorry couldn't see you um was it it's phil i can't see um i think i think phil might have had to go oh no phil, phil clark phil yes yeah sorry because i do have to go probably. yeah yeah there's a bit yeah. of a ramble so my my zoom kept dropping out there so i disappeared um yeah so i'd, I'd rather have more time to order my thoughts but i don't have it so let's let's give it a whirl um i think i think it, I, I think it's pretty um unarguable that there's a huge hole in the sort of political spectrum at the moment you know there's 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 um there is very clearly i think in more people's eyes there are two main political parties which really don't fundamentally stand for anything different and therefore i don't want to rehash all the stuff about whether you stand you know you sort of form a left reformist organization but i, I you know I, I i think the argument is well made that why do that when actually half if not more of the people doing the running actually don't think that left reformism is 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 what we need so while i you know i i couldn't make the uh meeting about the general election but i didn't watch the youtube and um i don't particularly think there's any huge value in um in marxists standing in this election but i do think what edmund's doing in in manchester will be interesting because i think the vote will probably be just as good as like tusk's vote except he would have stood on a a genuine and and worthwhile platform rather than one you've sort of um tailored to, to what you think people want rather than what you actually believe so um what does that leave us i, I mean i i think 
there was a thing in the Guardian this morning. Um, it says something like 60% more people than in 1997 believe that there's one rule for the rich and one for the poor. How anyone doesn't believe that, having seen, you know, what they've seen recently, I don't know. But, you know, that's that's clearly showing space opening up. There's also another one, like 35% more people than 1997 think parties that want to abolish democracy should be allowed to stand. Now, obviously, that's not a good thing in a sense because that's, you know, authoritarian but i think it shows that there is a growing um there's a growing understanding that what we've got doesn't work and therefore you know people are going to go to authoritarian organizations if if they think democracy doesn't doesn't work so why bother with it so i think all that sort of points towards there being a space for a um a, a marxist organization whatever you, you want to call it a communist organization um problems with every term but in the short term i think what we need to do is, is 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 we need to try and get as many people as possible together not jump into forming a party before we're ready but start trying to get the ideas out there i don't think you know i think we're starting from a really very low base and what we need is is, is media and, and ways of talking to people about you know, there are different ways of running society. There are different, um, uh, what Marxism is, what, what, what socialism is and, and the rest of it. So we need to do that work while talking Thanks. about the need for a party. Yeah. And sorry, just last sentence. And I do think we need to, and the one criticism I'd have of the statement really is that I think we also need to be making um the case for an, a, an extended democracy under the system we've got now we need to you know be really pushing and saying we want society to be more democratic now and that will springboard into a far more democratic society when we get the economic side of it okay sorry thanks, no. thanks a lot um greg i'm going to get it kirsty i know you've had your hand up longer but i'm going to let greg in because he also has to go so um greg three I'll, minutes i'm fine i don't mind if kirsty want kirsty was first i'm not in the that's just go just go all right um yeah thanks for that i so it was just a, a few observations i suppose first of all um in terms of the yeah i mean i'm i'm in total um agreement about having a radical position outside of the sort of the reformist spectrum of politics but i think it's an important point to make as well that um well, without a without a left a, a genuine left wing party there lacks a pole of attraction in terms of um influence over the existing um you know the 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 two the first and the second eleven of capitalism in terms of the two governing parties which is to say that having you know having a, an organized and manifest communist presence in the political um in political culture would exert a leftward influence over the Labour Party. Um, secondly, sort of comments that I, or thoughts I had in response to what Phil was saying, I remembered and I've just looked it up, there was a, a survey, I say a survey, a report published by the Institute of Economic Affairs, so like a pretty right-wing um, uh, think tank, this was in 2021, where they had themselves terrified running in circles, basically, because 67% um, of Gen Zers that they... Zoom as Gen Zers and millennials, actually, that, they, that, the, that were polled, um, responded saying that they positively, that they wanted to live under a, quote, socialist economic system, end quote. Um, so the, although there's obviously historically been sort of generational issues with the organised left in Britain, I think it's important to sort of recognise that potential generational attitude um, shift that may have occurred or is occurring. And I think that's reflective of the um, sort of change in strategy that we're seeing from what was the what was, it was it socialist appeal was it was it socialist alternative i can't remember who's now the revolutionary communist party 
Um, likewise, the growing ranks of the Young Communist League, which is the um, CPB's youth of action. So it's, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't really have sort of uh, congealed thoughts on that, I suppose, apart from just sort of noting that that's an interesting development of, of where sort of left of politics are heading. Thanks very much. Perfect, perfect timing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Kirsty. Can you hear me all right? Yes, thanks. And I would just like to say that everybody else has been saying, and I would like to say in a Marxism group, maybe a lot more people would join more groups like ours if they paid attention that Marxist communism was described in gaining rights for people in work and not being a slave to capitalism. And supporting the rich and the rich, making the rich richer as usual. Then maybe we would not link it so much with Stalin communism regime, which we all know killed the bourgeois Russian royal family. We all seem to link communism to this, and he was and his regime brutally and put fear of terror into people with his total Tolerianism government who murdered millions. These these are what Karl Marx's five stood for, according to John Miltimore. It was the family, was one was number one. Two, individuality. Three, external truth. Four, nations. And five, the past. And I don't think a lot of people put that in clarification of that. And they also... I'm writing a project on Karl Marx and I'll be illustrating on this for my BA in social sciences uh, for my project in which I finish next year. And I don't like how communism is always linked to brutality when actually communism was for the people because of the working conditions that they were working in and they're still working in. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much, Kirsty. Um, Ed. Oh, evening, comrades, and, and thanks, uh, Nick, for that introduction. Um, I wanted to uh, just draw attention to a, a point that, that Nick didn't reach quite understandably, um, but it's point 17 in the statement, if, if people have got it in front of them, but I'll, I'll read it out briefly. Um, a socialist or communist party would seek to win both parliamentary and local council seats all elected representatives would be tribunes of the working class and the oppressed, using their positions to advance the cause of socialism or communism. They will be accountable to the party membership. Party must be completely democratic. And I think uh, this uh, developments recently on the left, which some of which we discussed uh, in the last session two weeks ago, um, really drive home what an important point uh, that is and how important it is that. Um, any party that we build it is democratic in the way that it functions, and in particular, that it's not run by effectively the, the its elected representatives. Uh, as a, a maybe a notorious example, this is my for my sins, my uh, bedtime reading at the moment. Um, it's the manifesto of the Workers' Party of Britain, which I'm reading so that I can write an analysis of it. Uh, and I think it is important that we engage with things like that, um, but. Uh, of course, George Galloway is one example, um, perhaps on one end of the spectrum of politicians who are very much not accountable uh, to anyone but themselves. But in a more general sense as well, I think we really have to look at uh, some of the developments that are emerging on the left, people putting themselves forward uh, to be candidates. Uh, there may well be bigger announcements in the coming weeks. Uh, and, and we have to say that actually we can do better than this. Um, there are examples of people putting themselves forward, uh, to name one, Pamela Fitzpatrick, uh, who's the director of Jeremy Corbyn's Peace and Justice Project, has put herself forward as an independent candidate. Um, it may well be that Jeremy Corbyn is soon to uh, announce his own uh, independent candidacy of some kind. Uh, and I think we, we have to say that after five years in the wilderness, uh, five years since Corbyn ceased to be leader of the Labour Party, um, with very much uh, very little having been done to really cohere the left and, and to build the sort of organisation that we need, or indeed any type of organisation. 
um, that we, we can do better than that. We can have a democratic organisation where policy is worked out in a democratic and accountable way through discussion uh, and not handed down to us. Uh, and we can organise ourselves to uh, work out where and how we're going to stand candidates and who they should be uh, and how they should be accountable to us. Uh, and so I think that that's a really crucial point. And it's something that in our statement, I think, sets uh, what we're advancing apart from all of the various other proposals and, and un undemocratic initiatives which are being put forward at the moment. Uh, others may have their own views on that, but I thought it was a point worth highlighting and something that we should discuss further. Thanks. Thanks very much, Ed. Um, I'm a bit concerned that some comrades uh, seem to be dropping in and out. I mean, as in that they've got problems with their connections, but um, hopefully they'll be resolved. Minnie. Thanks, Saray. Yes, we dropped out. We just crashed and crashed. Defender gave me a message to say, had to restart. Sorry, missed what Ed said, missed what Kirsty said. Apologies, comrades. Yeah, uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, we'll say uh, solid solidarity and essential comradeship. Absolutely utmost. Um, the butchery of the Paris Commune. I heard a, a, an ex, um, somebody from the US Army who's retired speaking about Vietnam the other night. Two million people were murdered. Two million Vietnamese. And then the USA walked away and all for nothing. Well, to mess up their country. Um, crises are getting worse. Agree with that, the working class. Every single one of us is being affected in several ways. Um, one of the biggest, I, I like uh, name talking about socialism. I like, didn't hear what Ed said, but I like what Ed's called his, well, not his, it's hopefully going to be many, 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 many people's organisation. Um, I like communist future. It, it, it's, uh, it, it gives orientation in the name. I like that. Um, the ruling class are killing us. The Vietnamese, the Paris Commune, um, the Palestinians. Um, they're killing us at different speeds in different ways all over the world. Um, there's a, there's a, a scandal going on at the Royal College of Physicians at the moment for the physician associate position. Um, two years of training as compared to seven years for junior doctors. And the Royal College of Physicians spun the data that actually said from the health professionals, we don't want this position. We're worried about this position. It needs to be regulated. Um, people have been affected. Um, they spun that to not look so bad. And then they filibustered a meeting all in the name of finance because of the way the government's structured this to get money for physician associates and they're having to make GPs redundant. So they, they spun it. They're willing to go along with the ruling class to that effect to kill us in the NHS. That's just one example. Um, right, I've been doing a little bit of research. I looked at the Revolutionary Communist Party. Um, they've got a manifesto, but all it is is well, what it is, is a load of words, a load, a load of words. And they're saying they can't put, a, you know, a stricture for what people should do because they're international. Oh, am I up already? No, sorry. Okay, I'll have to come back in. I'm rambling. No, no, no. But i um, sorry. Just trying to make sure that everybody has a chance. And then I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for people to come. Happy we come, Reed. Thank you. Um. Having 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 stopped you, nobody else has got their hand up. Um, don't be shy, comrades. Just uh, jump in. For example, um, Phil raised Phil, who, who who's had to go, I think, to his meeting. He said he was going to have to go. Um, raised about whether there was any point, if I'm understood correctly, um, in communists standing in the elections, given the sort of um, vote that was likely. Um, those are my words, but my understanding. Do uh, do comrades agree with that? Do they disagree? Um, why 
should communists stand in elections? How do comrades see if, if comrades agree that we need to overthrow capitalism and we need a revolution, because that's what it will be, um, how is that going to come about? Um, are people going to just come out on the streets and take power in their hands? Does Parliament play a part in that? Um, I'd, I'd be interested in comrades' views on those points and indeed any others. Uh, well, Barry, yes. Just unmute yourself, Barry. Yep, great. No, you're still muted. Let me see if I can unmute you. I don't think I can. You just have to... That's it. That's it. Great. Can you hear me now? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, this point about the Paris Commune in 1871, the lessons of the Paris Commune. Um, I mean, Marx said that the main lesson of the Paris Commune, when he wrote his draft of uh, the Civil War in France, was that it, in essence, it was a revolution against the state itself. Uh, and that means that socialism isn't what a lot of comrades think. Uh, socialism isn't um, utilising the state to suppress the enemies of the revolution. Uh, a lot of people think, I think following Lenin and the Bolsheviks, that you have to use a state to crush the enemies of the people. But of course, if you do that, if you use uh, dictatorship and you don't, and you use undemocratic methods, then how do you get back to democracy? Uh, well, the Russian Revolution showed uh, you, you didn't do that. Now, the Bolsheviks didn't root their regime in the Soviets the day after the revolution. They rooted the regime in the party leadership, in the ministries of the old Tsarist state. And they ruled with uh, the old Tsarist state ministries and the civil service and added to it the party bureaucracy, the state, and then the state and party bureaucracy ruled. Uh, and that's not what... Uh, the statement envisage is, and uh, I don't think it's what Nick envisages either, um, because why would you need a state if the people were armed and managing society themselves? You would deal with any enemies of the people uh, that you happen to discover. You wouldn't need a state to do that. You wouldn't need a standing army to do that. A standing army, of course, is a break with the Marxist programme. Uh, we, we don't stand for a standing army and the officer class and, uh, and all the rest of it. Just on, on some points about the, the statement. Um, I know a statement has got to be keep everything in kind of general terms, so not to evoke disagreements. But nevertheless, I think we need to say something about the form of democracy the former party of democracy we stand for, we probably need to make some points about things we don't stand for, which is a lot easier, as you know. Um, there's been far too much centralism, central leadership in, in Marxist sects, where there's enormous powers of the leadership, uh, and that includes powers between conferences, which, which often used to nullify or neutralize or downplay the importance of the conference and any decisions made there. So um, this is, I know this has been a long debate in the Marxist movement. And I think Luxembourg made, Rosa Luxembourg made some very important points about this, about the importance of not having over-centralization, of having as much democracy, uh, as possible at, at the grassroots. Barry, yeah, can, well, you just, can you just, you, you, your time's finished, so if you could just make your last sentence for the moment. Okay, last, last sentence. Um, again, I think, you know, we should seek unity, but we probably need to be more specific and concrete about how we seek unity. The leadership of, say, organisations like the SWP and the Socialist Party 
their leaderships had died in the wolves sectarians and sect builders and so we need to i'm going to stop there thanks very much indeed thanks um so we've got john fitzgerald to come in and i'd ask claire's put something on the chat and um uh I wonder if she'd think about actually coming in and voicing that. Um, anyway, John, far away. Uh, yeah, thanks, Nick, and uh, all your comrades. Um, interesting uh, discussion, various points uh, come up there. Um, Bill was talking about, about uh, whether um, Marx should stand, and he used Tusk as uh, an example. I mean, Tusk. I know that they're doing a big, um, you know, they look at 100 candidates in the election this time, got rid of this other But over the years, they've always had a, a very, you know, derisory um, vote. They may get a better vote, uh, all kinds of reasons, but nevertheless, their, their program is, is a, um, a reformist program. I mean, the Socialist Party um, believes in uh, you know, Trotsky and all that. The um, mean, you know, the necessity to uh, defeat capitalism. But um, in this particular case, they just put forward principles. It has to be broad in order for parties involved to agree certain principles. Most of those principles are around. Um, against cuts, which is, is fine. But I would have thought if we were to stand as candidates, uh, it would be under a communist, uh, you know, a true, uh, the truth of what needs to be um, changed. And it would be uh, a slow process. But that, that, I think, is the difference. If we did stand, we it would stand under um, uh, uh, that, that kind of. Um, Thanks very much. Um, so Claire in the chat said, I believe it's important to maintain a presence, however modest. I, I understood that as meaning um, to stand. Uh, so I don't know if you wanted to... Um, expand on that claire but I, at the same time don't want to put you on the spot if you don't feel like speaking claire, yeah. claire's got no microphone she says a bit further ah down. okay oh dear sorry i didn't see that oh gosh okay all right well just keep typing <laughs> um anybody else want to come in that hasn't spoken No, um, Nick. I don't know if you want to have a couple of minutes to come back now. Or, or... Minnie wants to finish off her. Oh, point. sorry, Minnie. Sorry, I didn't see. Yes, of course. Yeah, far away. Thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, to a sect. What Barry was saying about sects. Um, yeah, the, we were looking at revolutionary communist parties. I so couldn't see in that manifesto, and I do think that need to set out. I mean, for example, production. Uh, common ownership, and I take Barry's point from last week about, you know, control, control mm -hmm. by the people, ownership by the people, um, for the people. Um, but, you know, there were some phrases and things in the RCP's manifesto, which was thousands of words, uh, um, and one of them was they're looking to get 2,000 at least, if not more, trained communists. What's a trained communist? Is that trained insect? Or... Lenin quotes or Trotsky quotes, I don't know. Um, but it, um, and then there's a just stop oil thing. They are they are talking about having a glorious revolution now, aren't they? I think Tina Vergman put something on an article on Twitter that, that um Facebook that I saw. Um and they're talking about having more activism, um, but they're gonna really F people off because they're gonna attack pe working class people going on holidays, they're gonna target airports. Um, so that is going to wear working class people off, I think, um, some of that. But nevertheless, they're talking about setting up a people's house, which I think, you know, you need to start setting up your structure. I like the idea of that. 
let's have a people's house. Let's get in there and let's start talking um, about a communist future. Um, uh, yeah, I, I read an article by Graham Scrambler on Facebook. Uh, something, and there was, I think it was his article that said there's a lot of anger out there. There's a heck of a lot of anger mm -hmm. in the working class. For example, where we live in, in our street, I mean, we were threatened to have our to be beaten up because we didn't like the street being used as an ashtray, and we asked politely, could it please not be used as an ashtray? So there's a hell of a lot of anger out there. Mm. Um, and there's, there's some really strange and things going on. Uh, people don't have any power, and there's nowhere to get positive action. And that space needs to be opened wide. Thanks. Thanks very much, Minnie. Yeah, that's some really good, really good points. Um, so, uh, comrades, what what do do we think? Um, the point about in in the in the I'm just going to say a couple of things. Oh, Barry, yes, come in. Well, just uh, on this point that Minnie made about uh, sex, I. I just want to give two examples of um, what a sex, sex is about. Um, and this is about the Socialist Party. Um, I once um, was interested to see um, the origins of the Socialist Party. It's found in document and it's very difficult to find. And um, I think I realized why it's difficult to find because I looked at its founding statement uh, where it split from the Fourth International and Landau uh, Taft. And there was no difference. There was no fundamental difference. Uh, and um, what the difference was, I mean, it was the same politics. It was the uh, first four con congresses of the Communist International and all that kind of orthodox Trotskyist stuff. So it was, what was the difference between Taft and Mandel? Well, Taft thought he was working class and he thought Mandel was middle class. Now, that is true. I mean, Taft was middle class, is middle class, but uh, sorry, Taft is working class uh, or was working class. And Mandel was middle class, but, you know, Trotsky wasn't working class, Lenin wasn't working class, Marx wasn't working class and so on. And that split from the Fourth International was sectarian and it, it's the basis the pillar of their sect. Um, I did have experience once of their attempt to build uh, a new workers' party, and I went to a meeting in Sheffield, and um, they just wanted to control the organisation, control the meeting, and they expected a ready-made social democratic constituency, so they expected people at the audience to be old Labour, and essentially it was all young people on single issue campaigns or older Marxists like myself. And um, that's not what they wanted. We, we wanted to, if we were going to join the Workers' Party, we wanted uh, local democracy, we wanted a local party committee, and they refused to do that. And although the local comrades quite liked the discussion, enjoyed the discussion, didn't have any objection to us turning up not social democrats, one of the leaders did, um, the ex-MP from Coventry, whose name escapes me for the moment. Dave Nellis. Um, yeah, I'll just end with that point. But he wasn't interested in all these young people with their single issue campaigns. He wasn't interested in Marxists like myself. All he was interested in doing is tracking down social democrats because he had this idea in his head. First, people go through social democracy. Then you might seek a Marxist alternative. Thanks very much. So, um, Toby, I'm only picking on you because I can see you. Everybody else has got their camera off, probably sensibly. Did you want to say anything? Don't feel, don't feel obliged. <laughs> I think, I think that might be a nose. Move the camera off. Hello. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. No. <laughs> Okay. Um, it, I, I mean, I suppose I'm slightly sceptical as to, I mean, it's not, it's not that I disagree with the basis of the programme. Look, I, I'm not, I'm not 
I haven't read every word of it. Uh, and it may be if I looked at it in great detail, there'd be some things that I'd have reservations about or all the rest of it. But um, it, it, it's just um, that I've been through various organisations on, on the left, um, particularly during the period when I was out of the Labour Party. I resigned from the Labour Party when Blair came in and I only rejoined when Cor Corbyn was elected, right? Um, and I, I was in various things and... So, I mean, some some of them had these sort of ideas. I, I know some of them, um, you could say, were perhaps left social democratic because it was never very clear quite what left unity, for example, was, was doing. And I mean, I, I was sort of on the edge of Tusk um, and uh, uh, was aware that that was a, a softer program but i mean currently for example um there's something up on um the internet um called why marx which is either close to or perhaps actually run by the communist party of great britain the weekly worker people um and it, it seems to me that in theory what they're trying to do is much the same as what you're trying to do too. Uh, I mean, you could you could argue in practice that you, you might be skeptical about, about them, but it, in terms of what they say they're trying to do. And I, I don't know what this Revolutionary Communist Party is like. I only know what Socialist Appeal was like. And I mean, Socialist Appeal was sort of wheel stick in the Labour Party until hell freezes it over. Uh, and I thought they were I thought they were wrong. But then, of course, I rejoined the Labour Party at the time of the Corbyn thing, so I could see something in it. Um, but I mean, I ended up once when there was Socialist Appeal comrade in my CLP, the only, the only one in it actually, uh, had a resolution about Clause 4 and I ended up moving it since he wasn't there and we won. But I mean, I admit that in order to get it through what has now obviously reverted to being a right wing CLP, but at the time I was really giving a sort of old Labour position. So I, I'm sorry if this isn't sounding all that coherent but it's just i'm a bit skeptical i've been through various things that have attempted to build something for the left of labor i know they haven't all been sort of clearly a communist uh in their uh you know outward position anyway in terms of what they would put in a program for the voters um though i think that you know in theory they privately generally agree with most of the things that nick put up on them uh, program. Thank, thanks very much, Toby. Well, I'm just going to call myself in because um, nobody else has got their hand up. Uh, uh, really, I think it's it, uh, Toby's just referred to some of the various groups, Socialist Unity and 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 others, and I've probably been in in, in most of those trying to 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 build something and participate. I think the Toby, you you live in Italy, so you you know the expression that there, that that there is about going home. So people who've been political and then they they just go home because they sort of. I'm not suggesting this is you at all, but um, they, they they don't see any. They're either tired or they don't see any other option. And again, I'm not suggesting this is you, but from my point of view, I don't think there is any other option to keep than other than to keep on trying because there is no future. Um, under capitalism and it's not just a sort it's it's getting worse isn't it i, I i'm not going to rehearse the the, the the problems that there are but i don't think it's an exaggeration to say that these are dangerous times when we see what's going on in the world and the here the beginnings of of trying to 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 cut away our democracy and so it's really do we do we have a choice other than to keep on it may sometimes feel like banging your head against a brick wall but essentially it is getting out to speak to those people i have confidence that there are lots of people who in fact would agree um and probably do agree with our ideas but we just haven't reached them um i'm not saying that that makes the task easy but it's um it's a question of of trying to to, to reach those people and and to build something. I don't think I am going to be the leader of the new workers' party, but I do think I I am bound, duty bound, to to do my my part in trying to build it. Because 
um, there is no future for not just for our grandchildren, our children, but I see, even see short term for us, it's not it's not looking good. So even if we're just looking at it from a purely selfish point of view. So it's really what can we do and how and this and what we're trying to do is not saying that that this is talking about socialism or whatever name we we we, we assume um, is going to be the new party, which I think is the problem with all the the little group. I call them grouplets. Um, it, it, it's that we just want to play a part in building that party. And if we can work with with others um, who already are in groups, great. Um, but uh, it, it's just um, I don't see that there is an alternative. And it's really what do we do and how do we set about uh, that that huge, huge task and become more than just a few people in on a on a Zoom. So. Um, Minnie, is that your hand up again or, or still up? It's Graham, yeah. Graham, Graham yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, I have a, a question about uh, equality, really, because um, we live in a society where there are so many differences, um, you know, there, uh, and the Marxist view, of course, is... Uh, from each according to his or her ability to each according to his or her needs. Now, we all have different talents, and those talents uh, then have to be put together. So it's, it's uh, to be talking about equality in some ways can be very simplistic, I think. Um, also, uh, things have changed um, in, in terms of, you know, how uh, we view society. Uh, at one time, uh, homosexuality was considered a crime. Now, I think uh, most people would say homosexuality is, uh, you know, a choice, but uh, paedophilia is definitely a crime, you know. So uh, society changes over a period of time and we, have to uh, take account of, of those changes. And I think when it comes to building a society, we have to build that society by bringing together lots of differences and different talents. We're not all of the same talent. We don't all have the same abilities, but we can put a lot of different abilities together to bring about something that's good for society. I'll leave it at that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, John, John Fitzgerald. Uh, yeah, hi guys. Um, yeah, when Galloway was elected, um, and I looked at his um, uh, programme, um, he, he was appealing, you know, both, he sent two letters out, one appealing to the the Muslims, um, and then one um, appealing to all. Um, I, I, I now consider that he has moved in, you know, what you would call conservative left. Um, in Germany, uh, Die Link have uh, split, and um, what you would call conservative uh, left um, parties come out of that. Um, so I think for the first time we're looking at interesting enough what the last speaker was saying about you know the diversity of views people have and uh, changes um, uh, as to what you consider to be progressive or you know um, um, you know because he said George Galloway. Is talking about basically, you know, he's not woke and so on. And um, um, people are saying he's homophobic and so on. But I saw today that Craig Murray, um, you probably all know, um, is standing in a blackball, going to stand in blackball for Galloway's party. I don't know whether people saw that. Um, 
So I think that we've not only, you know, you know, there's a split in now what you call, I suppose, the radical left and conservative left um, as to the way. So that makes things even more, to me, um, more, more, you know, difficult. Um, so I'm, uh, and as far as I say with organisations, we have we have the uh, we have the you know the Morning Star Communist Party, we have the um, Socialist Alliance. They're looking at starting the party. In fact, they're looking at having discussions with Social Appeal to merge with them if they can. Social Appeal, of course, is looking to have the Communist Party come out in May. And um, uh, yeah, and and we've got those other small revolutionary parties that have been there forever, um, who are neither um, Trotskyists or Leninists. I mean, mm -hmm. who are all Trotskyists and Leninists. Um, so I think it's it's you know going to be a well um, a situation where we've got to be able to say something different from all of them, be able to attract, yeah, attract an audience, um, small as it may be to begin with, but as long as it's based on what we really believe in and what, and the most important thing, as other speakers said, is democracy. Thanks very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to... That's it, really. Thanks, thanks, John. I'm just going to... Um, so Claire, who hasn't got a microphone, has put a uh, working title, Socialism, Communism for a Post-Capitalist capitalist Future, a dummies publication. That's not meant to be insulting at all, but to broaden accessibility and give the many hope and confidence beyond the local, national and international wiping out of the working class. Uh, a, search, a survey of digital platforms and working with popular journalists such as Ash Sakar could be one route to broadcast and open up debate and practical proposals. And Minnie has put that it's Blackburn where Craig Murray is standing. Um, and the comment, he's OK, but is it cronyism rather than democracy? OK. Um, does anybody else, before I call Nick back in, because it's 25 to, does anybody else want to come in um, to comment again? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry if I, I, I sounded sort of just kind of disillusioned, but I mean, I, in a sense, I, I, I do think we should keep on keeping on, or I wouldn't even be uh, uh, attending your meetings. Um, so, so uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying there is no point, and I agree with you completely that, that things are getting worse. I mean, look, I'm living in a country which has got a fascist prime minister, right? Uh, so I'm well aware of that, and, and where, in an opinion poll, 50% of Italians surveyed think that immigrants are... Uh, a danger to public order or something like that, if they or potential criminals, really. So, I mean, there is massive racism, which has been stirred up by uh, the FDI and by the Lega. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm aware of all that. And I, I'm aware also, perhaps more than you are in Britain, of the change in the climate. Uh, it, that it's got ridiculously warm all the time. And the, but um, uh, so I, I'm not saying that there isn't a crisis, a poly crisis. I accept accept all that. It is just I'm a bit bit sceptical about how easy it would be to to found a, yet another party. Um, one last point in that I think that um, having a paper, I know this is old fashioned, but I think having a paper that people could sell um, or give away if necessary to persuade people uh, helps. Um, that people read things more carefully if it's written down rather than if it's on a screen. Um, that, that, that is the reason that the Weekly Work a lot keep on with their paper, though I think they've never had more than about 30 or 40 members at any one time. Okay. 
Thanks very much. That's um, I, and I certainly didn't mean to infer to infer that at all, t t Toby. Um, I, I I appreciate completely, and that's why you're you're participating in the meetings. Um, I think uh, I'm going to ask Nick to come in now, um, and rather a difficult task of summing up in uh, just under twenty minutes. I think um, if you can, Nick. Well, thanks, comrades. Uh, thanks, Soraya. Thanks, everybody, for your contributions, uh, both um, oral and the ones that are written down in the in the chat. It's, it is extremely difficult to to respond, even in um, fifteen or twenty minutes. Um, but I'll try. Uh, I think what it does mean that we should come back to the second part of the statement in another meeting to give us. Um, an, an opportunity to to discuss the rest of the statement. Uh, and I just want to reiterate this. The purpose of the statement is um, it's set in the this, this this deals with one of the things that Barry raised. the The statement is designed to appeal to uh, Marxists and people interested in Marxism, people interested in changing society. Um, and it's designed to be broad enough to attract and involve and include um, people um, who may have differences that are not contained in the statement, but narrow enough at the same time to um, be clear that we are not social democrats. And just to take up, I, I don't know whether um, it, it was Toby or somebody else said it, I don't think we're trying to build a left alternative outside of the Labour Party. I think we're trying to build a communist party. And I think it's in, it may seem semantic or pedantic. It's we're, we're not the left, left, left of social democracy. We're not the furthest left of the social democratic organisations. We are different we're communists we don't want to manage capitalism in any shape or form we want to abolish it and again um toby's point about whether it's easy or not i, I don't want anybody to misunderstand where where we are those of the, the small group of us who, who organize these discussions we do not think that what we're proposing is easy or will be easy at all. We think it's um, extremely difficult to go from a few people to being a large number of people, particularly when you've got organizations that already occupy some of the space. But if those organizations were attractive and appealed to us, we'd, we'd be in them. And the fact that we're here in this discussion suggests that there are others like us who who don't want to join those organizations because the leadership certainly of, of them are building sects and they're building undemocratic um, yeah, sects who put their own interests above all else. Uh, if they had the interests of the working class as a whole in mind, in my opinion, the leaders of the Socialist Workers' Party, the Socialist Party, uh, the RCP, what was Socialist Appeal, now the Revolutionary Communist Party, they would be talking to one another, not simply to relaunch Socialist Appeal as the Revolutionary Communist Party, but they all those organisations would be saying, look, why are we duplicating so much? Why are we replicating so much? Um, we should come together and form one organization. And that organization, they they if that were to happen, which it won't because the leaders don't want it, what we want, it, it would have to be completely democratic. So just responding to Barry's points, we don't we're not frightened of discussion, debate, and differences. In fact, we encourage it. It's the only way that the working class can get to clarify its criticism of capitalism and to forge or formulate 
a program to try to win the working class to the banner of communism is by discussion debate um, making sure that we're clear about what we believe and then testing out our tactics refining them dropping them adding to them but the first thing for any communist party has got to be to set your your set out your stall set out your goal and that's what our statement is aiming to do is to make it clear that we believe that what we need is a mass communist party that would unify communists from different traditions if we're looking at how that might develop at the moment it's not going to happen because of the leadership of those big organizations and so therefore for the time being we're trying to concentrate and focus on bringing together in what you might call independent marxists people who have maybe been in an organization or have been on the outskirts of an organization um, and want to fight with others for communism, for a change in the way that society is organized in the interest of the working class. Uh, and we believe that there are a, a huge number of young people out there who will be and are interested in communist ideas, but will be, even if they're attracted in the first instance, will be repulsed if they come across anything which doesn't allow them to challenge, to criticize, to um, engage uh, on, on a comradely basis and discuss their ideas in, in an atmosphere in which they're treated as being serious working class militants and activists. So that, that, that's what we're trying to do. And, and nobody is suggesting that, that it's easy. And we welcome all the ideas about, um, you know, whether we should launch a newspaper. I think Claire's idea of a, a pamphlet, you know, setting out the ideas in a simple way is a great idea. But we we need assistance. We need help. Um, Graham mentioned that we need people with all sorts of different talents. There are lots of people in the working class movement who've got all sorts of skills uh, and we should bring them all together. And people in this, this meeting have got lots of talents. We, we want you to join with us. And so the last, the last paragraph of the statement, or the last two, it says through discussion and activity, this is paragraph 18, through discussion and activity, we aim to promote the ideas of socialism stroke communism and to make them popular within the working class and to build a group that campaigns to bring into existence the embryo of a new mass socialist communist party that we need. To this end, we invite all who share our aims or who are interested in finding out more to join our discussions and i think we should change that last paragraph and say that if you agree with our aims if you agree with the statement or you agree with it at least as the basis for collaborative work you shouldn't just join our discussions but you should join us you should become a member and that's that's what we want that's what we want to do so um, we, 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 we'd welcome that. Now, all sorts of different um, ideas of, or, or, or comments have been made, which I'll try to try to deal with. Question of standing in elections. I don't know how the comrades in Manchester are going to do, but I'm confident that they will try to present communist ideas in an attractive manner, and they will mark themselves out as being different from anybody else that's standing and that's what we need to do we need to try to find points of support from our low base from our small forces and try to find others and, and, and grow and 
uh, engage in debates and discussions with people in other organizations in a fraternal, uh, sororal manner uh, and discuss. And whilst the leaders of those organizations won't be interested, some of their members will be if we show that we've both got ideas um, that are that are not sectarian and that we've got a method of discussing and debating that is is uh, attractive. One of the things that I've not touched on, that hasn't really come up on, is also our view of how society is or will be changed. Again, picking up on Barry's points, we see the socialist revolution, if that's the term that we want to use, and I think it's a it's a it's a good phrase because it entails a complete revolution, a complete break with capitalism. But we do not see it as being brought about by a minority or a minority party riding the wave of a strike movement that's somehow going to be catapulted into government. We see it as coming about by the conscious action of the working class. That is the majority in society. Now, if the working class is going to do that, then communist ideas need to be prevalent across the board in every aspect of working class life. And they're not at the moment. And that's a, that's a big task. And some of these other organizations think that it's just a question of, uh, uh, as many quoted from the RCP's manifesto, building what, what's called a, a CADA organization as though the majority of the, the rest of the working class isn't capable of learning these ideas, of, 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 of um, accepting these ideas. I, I don't think those of us who've been fortunate enough to become communists are any different from those in the working class who haven't. It's been a set of circumstances where we came across the ideas, came across... Um, through struggle or whatever it was, and we, we we thought that the ideas were what was needed. We've got to find a way of, of making those ideas uh, the common coin of the working class. And if you look back in history, and I'm not um, saying we should emulate every single aspect of these organizations, but in the second part of the 19th century, there were mass what were at that time called social democratic, they were Marxist organizations. There were communist organizations, which were Stalinist, which were mass organizations, but clearly what inspired people to join them was the idea of forging a new society. So the ideas of communism, even in a distorted form, can be attractive. If the working class comes to power, it will need to extend democracy, proper, genuine democracy to all aspects of life. Uh, I didn't have uh, the opportunity to develop the point on the Paris Commune, but we, we've tried to distill it um, in paragraph 11 of our statement. Um, how are we to bring about this new society? So it says, how is this to be achieved? It requires the working class to win power. That means the working class, not a, a part of it, not a small party. It, it, it requires the working class to win power and to bring about the extension of democracy. The extension of democracy. We don't really have a genuine democracy in this society, uh, not least because, you, you know, you, you, obvious things like elections are only every five years, we don't control the press, the media, the schools, the education. But we actually live in a society which is completely undemocratic. The ruling class, the minority class, exploits the rest of us. How can anything that is superimposed on that be democratic in, in the slightest? So one of the most democratic things that we have to achieve is the common ownership of the means of production, economic democracy. But the statement goes on to say, we bring about the extension of democracy by replacing the undemocratic institutions of the capitalist state 
which serve the interests of the capitalist class with new state institutions based on real democracy. And this is trying to distill the lessons that Marx learned from the Paris Commune. The election of all officials, full accountability, with officials paid only the average wage and subject to recall. So you have revocability, revocability, you have accountability, you have no official being paid more than the people that they're serving. Um, you're replacing a talking shop with participatory uh, democracy, where the working class actively runs society. And that would be achieved because as we abolish capitalism, we can shorten the working uh, day, shorten the working week. People can be actively involved in every aspect of running how society is organized. Every, every aspect, every part of society. Uh, the, the statement goes on. Alongside these democratic advances that I've just outlined, the working class in power would have to expropriate the capitalist class, establishing economic democracy. With the abolition of the wages system and of classes, the need for any form of state other than for administration would disappear. So there would be no state. And, and Marx says uh, in the civil war in France that the, 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 the Paris Commune achieved in a stroke, what the bourgeois are constantly calling for, and that is cheap government, because they abolished the standing army, they abolished the police, and they abolished all the privileges and perks and expenses of having officials. And you can imagine what you can do with the resources of society if it's organized for need, not for profit. And uh, I can't remember who it was that um, spoke about the question of equality. I think it might have been Graham. Um, Marx deals with this in his critique of the Gotha program. And really, he's talking about the abolition of what you might call formal equality. Um, if somebody works and has four children, and somebody does the same job and has no children, obviously one is in a better position than the other. But if you think about Marx's aphorism that Graham referenced, from each according to his or her ability, to each according to his or her need, and that need obviously would be socially determined, democratically decided, but any, any ordinary person can identify with that straight away. We would not expect somebody with disabilities to produce as much as a strong grown person. Somebody who's ill, somebody who's got mental health issues, they would require perhaps more than somebody who's in good health. Th these things would be obvious. And I think they really do appeal to ordinary people to say, the society that we live in now is sick. It really is sick and it needs to be cleansed. And that means getting rid of the profit system. And it means introducing a society that is based on organizing the wealth and the talents at the disposal of humanity for the interests of all. Thank you. Thanks very much, Nick. Um, well, it, it, it just, um, Janet has posted, I can't remember if there's been a meeting around democracy. If not, it might be worth expanding on what is in the statement. Obviously, Nick spoke then about some of the, um, uh, some of the, the points about what, what democracy, uh, real democracy would be like, but um, that's, that's perhaps a proposal um, that we should take up in the future. Um, just to, I'd like to thank everybody for um, Nick for his introduction, and I'd like to thank everybody for having contributed to the discussion. Um, and 
obviously this is an ongoing discussion. We've got the next uh, uh, discussion is on the 1st of April, and that is um, Ed Potts will be introducing a discussion on the financial crisis of local government. What should Marxists say about it? So you've got um, places like Birmingham that are going bankrupt, um, the, 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 uh, the, the local government. Um, and then two weeks after that, we have the Will McMahon speaking on the environmental crisis. Um, what should a socialist strategy look like? Um, I'd also like to thank comrades who have started to um, contribute to the website. We're, we're very pleased that Barry has um, posted two new reviews on the website. One is a review of a, a new book by Mick Lynch, uh, sorry, not by Mick Lynch, it's called Mick Lynch, The Making of a Working Class Hero by Gregor Gould. Uh, and the other is a review of Blood in the Machine, um, looking at the Luddites, their struggle uh, in the early 18th century. 19th. 19th, sorry, yes, yes, I'm reading the uh, typo. Uh, I was, as I was reading it, I was thinking, I'm sure that's wrong. Uh, um, and so that's a, a, a Blood in the Machine, The Origins of the Rebe Rebellion Against Big Tech by Brian Merchant, both reviews by Barry. Uh, and we've got the article on the uh, miners' strike, 1984-85, by uh, former striking miner Gary Ironmonger and, um, and other matters. Um, so I would ask comrades to, um, to join in, write. Um, criticize, suggest something. Um, the more the more we have, more contributions we have, the more diverse the discussion is going to be. Um, I'll bring that to a close because I've just seen what time it is. So thanks again to everybody and look forward to seeing you next time and tell other people and get them to um, Zoom in as well. Thanks very much. Night. <laughs>